I'm Rose O'Neill and I'm going to talk to you today about straw bale gardening. We have um, a cut list to go through and then how we condition plant and types of plants that we would put in. So for the cut list, uh, things that you would need, um, we've got this down to bales, okay, the straw bales themselves, which run about $7 a piece. I've been purchasing mine at uh, Dodge Grain up in Salem, New Hampshire. If you buy 10, they deliver. You buy fewer, you're either going to schlep, schlep them down yourself or they will deliver for a price. Uh, if you choose to put them in your vehicle, you want to wrap them well because they shed. Um, so my investment for straw bales is $70 um, this year. Landscape fabric, uh, which is what we used uh, initially to put down and it stays there, uh, was like a $20 investment for 50 feet. And that uh, is just to cover the ground and you know keep the weeds down, obviously. You can also use cardboard or you can use mulch. Uh, the cardboard has the advantage that it will soak up the water initially that is running through your straw bales as you're starting to condition because it doesn't accept the water really well while it's brittle. It takes a few go arounds and you get less runoff. But, and, or it's going to, you know, go into the soil, but I have a bit of a slope out there, so I see the water running down. Uh, other things that you need is fertilizer for the conditioning. And I use a liquid fertilizer, although of course you can always use a dry. You use pounds of dry versus tablespoons of the liquid. Uh, so I think it kind of works out to the same price overall, but liquid fertilizer is expensive. Um, Neptune's Harvest for a three liter container would be around $46. Uh, if you purchased, I buy uh, Fox Farm, Grow Big, and a quart of that is $29. So AgriThrive also has a product of liquid fertilizer and certainly you can use that. Uh, and you're, you're only putting in you know, a few tablespoons per quart or gallon. And I use rainwater because I collect rainwater and I just fill up my watering cans accordingly. It usually takes two good sized watering cans to do all of my bales uh, in one fell swoop. Uh, we also uh, purchased a new soaker hose this year that's 50 feet long. I think I'm going to like that the best. My other one was a little short and I found myself needing to water the plants down at the end uh, because it just didn't quite make it. Now it's going up and down three times. So I'm covering more square footage and I'm hoping I'm going to get a better drip off that. Runs not really, you know, like 10 to $20, depending on the size of the lumen, the radius of the lumen, not real expensive um, and certainly critical to doing really for me any kind of gardening because it's just so much easier to have a, a soaker hose down than, you know, watering the air around your plants. And also the plants themselves are getting wet and that's usually not good for them. The other thing that really works, you know, if you're a lazy gardener like myself is putting everything on a timer. So the soaker hose goes on a timer and it's set for twice a day. And usually, you know, five to seven minutes depending on how dry it is outside, how much, you know, so you have to keep tweaking it a little bit, but just checking, you know, make sure that your plants are staying well watered but not soaked and pretty much that's all you need to have to in the potting mix i'm sorry so the potting mix uh is a little bit more expensive than buying potting soil however you don't end you just really are putting or top dressing those uh, straw bales so it doesn't really take a lot 
Uh, we use five or six bags for 10 bales. Runs about $25. And what you're gonna put your plants in, um, that soil is really almost using it like your top dressing mulch. Uh, and I'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. The, the only other thing that you would use, uh, which we don't happen to, is I recycled my tomato cages and found that they were just as effective as putting up a trellis. So some people trellis their straw bales so they put posts at either ends and run wire several times going across uh, and it gives their plants something to grow on. Because I had tomato cages already in existence and they may as well get used, I saw no need to make a trellis. So we are not trellising our bales, I'm just using tomato cages. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what happens next because conditioning the bales is really key to this whole enterprise. And what I've done in the past is about 10 to 14 days, every other day to every third day. So I would be watering in fertilizer probably four times a week. Uh, this year I'm doing it every other day just because it's so cold. Uh, and I'm giving myself three to three and a half weeks for those bales to really start to cook because it's, again, it's cold out uh, and it's not doing what it should be doing. What you want is the internal temperature to be about 145 degrees and then start to cool down a little bit. Basically, you're making compost. And I do not take the temperature of my straw bales. I'm not that good a nurse. I stick my hand in. If it feels pretty warm to me, I'm thinking I'm good to go and I set my plants. All you need to set the plants is, is, a, is a trowel. You wanna make a hole big enough inside the straw bale to accept the root ball without it getting crushed. And then you're gonna to top dress with your potting mix. Uh, the soaker hoses have already been put down. You can put those down at any point once you situate where you want your straw bales and um, mine always go in the same place every year. Out my side yard, which you'll see in a few moments. And uh, you anchor them down with those little hooks. Um, and then we hook it up to the garden hose and the timer so that we can keep them well watered. And even during the conditioning process, you wanna keep those bales well watered. That's part of the process. So every other day or every third day, you're adding fertilizer to them and you're watering every day. Uh, unless you get a heavy rain, then probably you can skip it. Lots of places, um, I'm trying to, I'm sorry. So once you've conditioned your bales, you're gonna plant you're gonna to top dress, you're gonna set your cages, and then you're good to go. Uh, your things are on a timer. You shouldn't have a lot of weeds, I never do. Sometimes it grows a little grass, um, which is easily pulled out, uh, or you can leave it. I don't know, I sometimes do a little of both. Uh, you can have mushrooms growing, don't eat them. I do not think they're safe to eat, um, but they often make mushrooms. Um, and those you can just let them grow and then they dry up and fall off. It's not really a problem and it doesn't affect the produce that you're growing. Things that I grow are tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, eggplant, and zucchini. Those happen to be things that we eat. Other things that can be grown are green beans. Anything that really grows above ground uh, is easily made. Uh, uh, can be planted in these straw bales. 
I would avoid uh, doing anything like potatoes or carrots or radishes, anything that's that grows below ground. Uh, the straw bales really aren't conducive to that, uh, I don't think. I have seen people that do use, you know, grow tomato, to potatoes in them. But, you know, you would have to take the bale apart at the end of the season completely to harvest those potatoes because they grow inside. It, it, that would be very messy. Not something I really want to do. And in fact, um, this year, what we're going to do is recycle our bales. And I'll let you know next year how that worked as an experiment, because I'm hoping that with a recycled straw bale, it will already be preconditioned. And I will just have to wait for it to warm up. And it should save some time. But this year I bought all new. So I'm conditioning from scratch. And it's going to take me about three weeks. I don't intend to plant probably much before Memorial Day or then in and around. So I think now uh, I'm going to head outside. And I hope you've enjoyed this part of the programming. All right. So we are now outside and I can show you my straw bales and the soaker hoses, which have already been tamped down in place with these little hooks. And so these are put on first. Uh, we are still conditioning the bales and trust me, this trowel does not want to go through these right now, but it will. Um, given another couple of weeks of steady conditioning, we will be able to dig little holes for the various plants that I have already picked up. Um, and then we'll take our tomato cages and put them over the plants to allow them to grow up. So soaker hose, bales, as you can see, I've got two lines of five and we found that to be the most efficient in this yard for a configuration, but other people use use other things. Our potting mix is uh, on display in front. We have six bags this year, thinking that's gonna be more than adequate. You really just wanna cover the surface of the straw bale, so you're not really trying to plant into that uh, potting mix. You're actually planting right into the bales. Uh, and my assumption is that the potting mix is acting almost as a cover to keep the moisture in and the heat. We also have, um, and then the tomato cages will go on top. So pretty much that's it. I can't really show you too much more at this point because heaven knows we're really not ready to plant yet. However, it is still early days and hopefully in another couple of weeks of steady conditioning, we're gonna be able to put in our plants, cover everything with the potting mix, set our cages, and we will turn our timer on for twice a day and be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed the straw bale gardening lecture and happy planting.